Hi, my name is Kieran Milne, and I'm a tech lead with the Juniper Networks Certification Program here in Education Services. This learning bite discusses interface naming conventions for Junos devices. So here's the default interface naming convention. It's type-fpc-pick-port. Now let's break this down a little bit. The type is the media type of the interface that you're installing in the chassis. Uh, a media type can be Gigabit Ethernet or ATM or a Sonnet card. Uh, there are a variety of interfaces available for Junos-based devices. Uh, in general, the syntax used in the, in the actual naming convention here is fairly intuitive. You can see some examples there. GE is Gigabit Ethernet, AT for ATM, SO for Sonnet SDH, a T1 for a T1 and DS1. Uh, there are also some interfaces where it's not necessarily uh, clear right away what the interface type is and an example would be XE for 10 gig Ethernet ports. The next element there is FPC. Now that's a flexible PIC concentrator. An FPC is the line card that you install into the chassis of a device and so the value that goes here is the slot number of the line card going into the chassis. The next element is PIC. These are physical interface cards uh, you can see on the diagram at the right that the physical interface cards are the actual media type cards that you slide into the FPC and then the whole thing goes into the chassis. So the PIC is the interface card number. That's the value that goes in here. And lastly, the port number. So the specific port on the particular PIC that you've installed. Now it's worth noting here that on a couple of uh, Junos-based platforms, the terminology used is slightly different than FPC and PIC, but in every case, you can count on using FPC and PIC in the CLI. So that's a, a good way to go about uh, thinking about the naming convention here. Let's look at some examples of interface naming conventions. The first example here is SO-0-0-0. Now you can see on the router on the right side there that we've highlighted a particular port and that particular port is the first port, so port 0 on the first PIC, PIC 0, in the first FPC slot, FPC 0. So that's what gives us the SO-0 slash 0 slash 0. Another example, example B. Over on the right side of the chassis there, you can see that the circle is highlighting the last port on that particular PIC. Now this is a DS3 card, and so the formatting here is T3. T3 and DS3 are, are interchangeable, of course, and so the CLI syntax here is T3-7-1-3. So this is port 3 on a channelized DS3 PIC that is in slot 1 of the FPC and the FPC is in slot 7 of the chassis. And a final example here, example C. Uh, that circle over on example C there is highlighting port 6 on that fast Ethernet card. And so, again with the intuitive naming here in this case, we have FE-7-3-6. And you can see in the diagram, that's a fast Ethernet card. It's in FPC slot 7. It's in PIC slot 3 and we've highlighted port 6. So let's take a look at the use of the naming convention here in the CLI. Now this uh, device I'm working on is an MX series router. I'm going to issue the show chassis hardware command here. Now this shows us an inventory of everything that's installed on this chassis. And the things to note in our case here are FPC0 with a PIC in it, and FPC slot 1 is filled with two picks in it. One thing I should also mention here is you see this value called MIC as well. Uh, I mentioned earlier that some devices use slightly different naming conventions for their FPCs and PICs. Uh, the MX series uh, product line is an example of that. Their branding names for FPCs and PICs include the name MIC and so that's simply a, a branding usage here. Uh, again we can stick with FPC and PIC in our case.
So let me enter another command here. This command, show chassis FPC pick status, is actually a bit of a troubleshooting command to confirm whether your uh, cards are online or offline, but it gives us a very nice simplified view of our FPCs and picks. You can see again, slot 0 is FPC 0 with a single pick, and slot 1 with two picks. Now in terms of viewing some of these interfaces more specifically, I'm going to add one more command here. I'm going to use the show interfaces terse command, and let's look at that first pick, those 10 giggy ports. Now the identifier for 10 giggy picks, you may remember from a bit earlier, is XE, and we are in FPC slot 0, pick slot 0, and I'm going to use a wild card here just to uh, see what we have. And there you can see we have our four ports of 10 giggy on that pick. I'm going to use the same command again, but I'm going to try looking at our giggy interfaces. In this case, you can see that my CLI actually auto-completed to FPC slot 1 because it automatically knows that the only option for gig E ports on this chassis are under FPC slot 1. Now I'm going to enter pick slot 0 here. I could have picked either one. And let's use the wildcard again so we can see what we have. You can see that we have, starting with port 0, we go all the way down to port 9. So there are our 10 ports of gigabit Ethernet on this particular pick. So that's an overview of interface naming conventions for Juno Space devices. I'll leave you with a couple of additional resources if you'd like more information. In terms of training, we have an introductory course called the Introduction to the Junos Operating System. It's a one-day course uh, that combines lecture and hands-on labs. And in the labs, it includes interface configuration. You can get more information about this and other courses at juniper.net slash training. The other resource that's very useful is the documentation or the technical publications. There are a number of interfaces guides that cover network interfaces, services interfaces, and other special interfaces as well. You can get very good detailed information about every you know, media type that's available for your product uh, and very detailed specs uh, on all the interfaces you might need uh, more information on. You can search through the tech pubs according to your OS version or your product line, and you can get that information at juniper.net slash tech pubs. Well, that brings us to the end of this learning bite. I hope you found it useful, and uh, good luck when you're working on your own Junos device, uh, getting your way around the CLI with interfaces. Bye for now. Juniper Learning Bytes. View more at www.juniper.net slash learningbytes. They're free, concise lessons on specific subjects, relevant for all skill levels, taught by training experts, and available whenever and wherever you're ready to learn. Juniper Learning Bytes. Expand your knowledge bit by bit.